Coming up on today's show, we sit down and have a chat with local singer-songwriter Lauren Amore. Actor and DJ Wayne C. McDonald performs live right here in the pit. We also sit down and have a chat with local musician and songwriter Doc Smith. And we see the second half of Ellie Stevenson's live performance. But coming up first on the show, we sit down and have a chat with local singer-songwriter Lauren Amore, who you might remember from a previous live session, to talk about how she got started. So, tell us a little bit about your career as a singer and songwriter. Where did it all begin, first of all? Okay, so I would say that my career definitely began very young, but I know everyone says that, but I went to a drama school, um, and that's where I kind of discovered my love for singing. And then I carried it on through secondary school, and then I went to a music academy to do a degree and to do my college and things like that. And whilst I was at this music academy, that's where I met my management. And that's when I got a publishing deal. And that's kind of where I am now. <laughs> Brilliant. So it kind of seems like it stemmed, um, obviously, from your love for music and for performing. Yeah. But everything kind of went quite right for you. You hear some stories of people saying, oh, you know, had to really work to kind of get noticed and I had to keep pushing myself. I'm sure that was probably an element <laughs> for you. I'm yeah. sure it wasn't all just perfect and easy going. But obviously, you're, how old are you? Um, I'm 23. Okay, so you're still quite young. So it sounds like everything kind of went quite smoothly. Is that right? It did and it didn't. Um, I've always wanted to be a singer. And when I went to the Music Academy and I was kind of in my sort of final year, I was starting to panic and thinking, why aren't I in Hollywood yet? Sort of thing because, I, you know, I was singing in, in weddings and in like functions and things like that. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of met my management that I was like, like, okay, it's fine. Because lots of my friends that went to the Music Academy changed their career because it is a really hard industry to get into. But I knew that I just, changing the career wasn't an option for me. Yeah. I just don't know what I would do. Like, I, I want to be a singer, I want to be a songwriter. Yeah. Um, so as much as it did go smoothly, it wasn't very smoothly and yes. I wasn't safe from the very beginning. No, definitely. So it definitely took a lot of perseverance. Yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. That's one thing, if you want to work in, in this industry in particular, you really do need to persevere and to keep trying because you never know. I mean, you hear stories um, from the likes of, I believe it's um, it's Keen, that really famous band. Yeah. I'm sure they were something like 30, you know, when they got noticed and, um, and if you give up, you never know what's going to happen because it might have been that next thing that you did, the right person might have been there. Definitely, I totally yeah. love that. And obviously just, just talking to you, seeing the passion on your face, like <laughs> you sound really passionate, you clearly absolutely love what yeah. you do. Yeah, oh fantastic. So when you met your management, how did it kind of go from there? Did they kind of help you change your outlook on your career and what it is you were doing? Yeah, well I suppose, um, so when I met my management, I got put into a band, so there was two boys and then there was me, um, but they lived in Nottingham, so it was like a long distance relationship band. Um, <laughs> and things just sort of didn't really work out with the boys, but um, they're doing their own thing and they're doing really well, but then I stayed with the management and I feel like I needed that sort of, I needed to meet them to kind of get where I am now because now I can do things like logic and, and producing, which if I didn't meet them, I don't think I would be able to do it myself. It wasn't until I was kind of thrown on my own that I had to learn. Yeah. Definitely. how to do things definitely. so it was definitely a good thing <laughs> yeah good and I think it is that it's like be having to be independent all of a yeah. sudden and almost be like okay it's just on my shoulders now yeah. I need to really work for it work for it and push it yeah definitely amazing <laughs> um like like I said you are quite young um but you seem very confident is that confidence something that again that you've always had or something no. that stemmed over time <laughs> I'd, well that's the thing because um half of like people that talk about would say that I was confident but half would say that I've always been really shy and I know definitely as a child I was very shy but music was something that really gave us the confidence and you know like going through school not everyone's gonna like that you're a singer not everyone's gonna be nice about it and I think I have kind of became a little bit tough I mean I'm such a sensitive person but I think being a singer and wanting to sing through school where you've got people that are just going to say things for saying things safe, yeah. that's kind of has toughened us up because now I know that there are going to be people that aren't going to like what you do, but just but for no reason, just because people like to be like that. Yeah. And you have to be tough, like you have to know that not everyone's going to be on your side, but there's going to be, for what one person that's not on your side, there's going to be a million that are. Yeah. So that's the outlook that like, I feel like you've got to have like this. Yeah, I love that outlook. And I'm lo I love your like positivity. It's making me think, yeah, you're so right. <laughs> no, 
definitely, and it, that's it. It's about being positive. Um, and I think if you have positive thoughts, then it's kind of, you look positive on the outside. And, and that's, uh, yeah, it like draws people in, I think. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the type of music that you create. So I'm um, mainly pop. Um, when I went to uni, a part of the course was you had to write in other genres of music and I was adamant that I could not write anything other than pop. But um, we did this module where you had to like, write a folk song and things like that. And in the end, my teacher, who was actually Barry Hyde from the Future Heads, oh, just a little, um, little name drop. <laughs> in the end, he was, he was just like, do you know what, Lauren? If you just want to write pop, just write pop because there was just no way that I could have done anything else. Yeah. But it's because... I. I'm so driven in pop and pop something that I feel really helps me through like dark times and good times and pop music is just always there for whatever you're feeling. Mm -hmm. That's kind of all I've listened to so that's all I really know how to write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's good, <laughs> that's fine and I think it is like if that's what you're passionate about yeah. then why wouldn't you, like why would you kind of change that? Yeah. Definitely. A massive thank you to Lauren for coming in and you can check out her music on all major streaming platforms. But coming up next on the show, we have a live performance filmed right here in the pit. And this is a new one for the show, a dramatic monologue written and performed by actor and DJ Wayne C. McDonald. You know what? I opened my eyes this morning and not for the first time. Wished I wasn't here. Anywhere but here. Sailing the sanguine seas. I've been a good man. I always made sure everyone around me can eat. Shoulders big enough to help anybody. And even when I had nothing, I still gave half to help. But what do you do when your best is never enough? You never bite the hand that feeds you, but you didn't just bite the hand, you took the whole arm and you're still hungry. How many times can I say I'm sorry? How many times before you just let it go? I can only cry so many rivers. I can only show you what I can show you and tell you what I can tell you. And even then you never listened. Poker face, holy than that. Who do you think you are? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're doing it again, you're not even paying attention. You begged me to get on my knees for you and crawl in the desert while you turn up the heat, while I burned, while you watched, smiling, applauding, you and your friends cheering me on from the sidelines, swimming in my tears. Blisters may have gone, but the pain, not so easy to forget, is it? Is it? Will all great Neptune's oceans wash this away? This blood is on your hands, so on your head be it. You created this monster. Amazing stuff and a massive thank you to Wayne for coming in. Hopefully we can get him in for more performances very soon. But coming up next on the show, our host Carolyn sits down with local musician and songwriter Doc Smith. So like as a kind of like 
process. How did you decide that you wanted to get into music and have it as a career? Because I think it's one thing doing it for fun and it's another thing actually actively seeking to earn, to earn a, a decent income from it. Um, I don't, I think, uh, well, you know, that's, uh, if I ever have earned a decent <laughs> income from it, uh, I've certainly had, a, had a, a minor career in music, you know what I mean? I've done mm-hmm. the things that everyone does, mm-hmm. release records and, and things like that. Um, but I think it's just always been, always been a, 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 not something, not something that I was interested in doing, or not, not even a passion, just something that was hard to do. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so interesting because a lot of people, a lot of musicians that we've interviewed, have said a similar thing. Mm-hmm. It wasn't an act of decision; it was something that you needed to do because yeah. it was part of you. Would you say that was like the same? Absolutely, yeah. When I was when I was about ten years old, I think, or maybe even nine. Uh, one of my brother's friends left a bass guitar at the house and I think I with it for as long as I was allowed to mess with it and then I think I was 13 when I got one for Christmas uh, and never never put it down. Yeah, that's brilliant. So did, can you play any other instruments or is it just I bass can, guitar? I can, I play the guitar, I sing, uh, if it's got strings on it I'll have a shot of playing it. So. And were you taught or were you self-taught? No, no, self-taught. Yeah. Amazing, I always find it so interesting when people say I've self-taught with this and honestly I think you've really got to you know, almost be born with that specific talent to learn how to do that because I mean I could never dream of doing it. I remember <laughs> I picked up my boyfriend at the time would play the guitar, picked up his guitar and I was like, I really want to learn. And I try, and I just literally, I just, I don't have the right skill set <laughs> to do it. Like it was hard. So I do find it very well, I'm, I think it's a learned skill, but it's, you've, you've got to have the motivation to sort of sit in on the weekend and, and just and keep it. playing <laughs> skills and writing songs yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So obviously, as I said, you are based within the Northeast and things. Yep. So you'll know the Northeast music scene quite well. Yeah. How do you find that and have you got a comparison to say like Manchester, London or the big cities where people would assume that there's kind of more opportunities for musicians in comparison to, to the North East? I think there's, I think there's definitely, there is opportunities in, in the North East. I mean, we have great things, um, like great publications like Narc and The Crack and things like that. And, you know, there's, to have all day as they go on, uh, Narc Fest and things like that every year, the Clooney. Um, and there's a big kind of in Newcastle, especially in that area of Oosburn, there's a big, you know, a, a lot of drive mm-hmm. for getting musicians onto stages and getting people into venues. Um, but I think in South Shields, particularly, there used to be a really vibrant scene, and with mm-hmm. the closing of a lot of a lot of venues, it was it's kind of died a death. But I think there's what there is up here, rather, you know, that I've noticed where in maybe in bigger cities because Newcastle, Sunderland, I mean South Shields is just a, just a large town, they're all quite provincial and mm-hmm. there's quite ni- tight-knit communities and yeah. not people, not a lot of backbiting and not a lot of rivalry, mm-hmm. just kind of everybody wanting to get the same thing out of it. Yeah, so you're able to kind of have that network but the people that are within that network are supportive and yeah. like-minded and everybody has an end goal of just doing what they love, yeah. um, which I think actually is is amazing because it almost inspires you to do it more because I think when you're kind of around a lot of competitive people who really just aren't same, you know, aren't, aren't as like-minded as you, it, yeah. it can make you lose the passion and the love for the craft of what you do. So being around people who really understand that's yeah. important, isn't Ab- it? Absolutely. I mean, there's a guy, there's a promoter in, in Newcastle called uh, Russell Pode is his name. And he's uh, been instrumental in opening like a dedicated music venue in the, in the last couple of years, uh, Bobbix in, in Jasmine. And that's amazing that there's ven- new venues opening. We played there a couple of times and mm-hmm. it's always a good night. And I mean, even right into the, you know, the first lockdown, he was still putting on socially distanced gigs and getting people amazing. through the door just so people would have somewhere to go and play mm-hmm. and somewhere to see live music. And I know that you've said that that was at the beginning of like the first lockdown and things. What do you think it's going to be like when, you know, eventually at some point soon, hopefully um, we're able to start going out again, going to gigs again. Do you think it's going to come back, you know, massively, it's going to be a massive push for live gigs and music or is it going to take its time? Uh, uh, I hope it's going to be, you know, it's going to be quick and it's going to be 
you know, a, a really big push mm -hmm. for everyone to get back in because I know that certainly, and I can speak for everybody else in the band, like we're dying to get back out. Like, yeah, <laughs> um, and you know, I, I, I think, I think pe people will be wary, you know, punters will be wary about going back out again, but like, I think there's going to be a kind of a, a great, a great sense of relief. There's going to be a universal sigh of relief and everybody's oh, just going to go. I think people just want to get their hair down <laughs> yeah. and listen to that and get lost in the music and just, because it does take you to another place. I mean, one of the reasons I love listening to music is because it just transports you, even just for two minutes. Like, the length of a song, it takes you out of your own headspace and mm -hmm. can just let you imagine and, you know, all those lovely things. It helps you do that, Absolutely, and that's yeah. what people need right now, isn't it? And they need it more than ever. So, I, mean, I know it's well, it's the purest therapy in the world, isn't Absolutely. it? You know. Absolutely. A massive thank you to Doc, and you can check out District Attorney's album on all major streaming platforms. Last but not least on the show, we have the second half of seventeen-year-old Ellie Stevenson's live performance filmed right here in the pit. Dream. 